welcome back to another devlog. Today I can show you a few cool things I've been working on over the past few weeks. The main focus was on a new pirate themed area. This area will be the last one and is more than twice the size of the previous ones. I'm not quite finished yet, but I can show you a large part already. As originally planned in the first devlog, I implemented a new trap. Oh, I forgot an important trap. Explosives. These explosive boxes blow up as soon as the player touches them. Which brings us to the next interactive objects, parrots. When the player collides with them, they are kicked in the direction the player is facing. At this point I have also added the first authentic sound effects. Take a listen. <laughs> of course, the parrots are a nice gimmick in the first place, but you can use them to your advantage. If you kick them precisely on an explosive crate, you can blow up this crate and have more surface to run on. The first part of the pirate area also offers classic platforming and some fishy obstacles. I wonder what will happen if we step closer. You have already seen this part in the intro. These wooden boxes are floating up and down. If you look closely, you can see a pattern and master this part as well. However, the implementation of the pirate ship was not that easy. Firstly, the pirate ship must always adjust the rotation and point the cannons towards the player. The rotation must not happen too quickly, so the rotation has to be done over a defined period of time. After that, I created 10 cannonball spawner objects at the openings of the cannons. Each cannonball is a rigid body object and has a defined weight. With the parameters, distance to player, weight of the cannonball and angle of the cannon opening and some additional calculations, the ship now shoots exactly at the player. To make it look like classic cannons and not like a high precision computer algorithm, I added a certain variation in the force of the shot and a slightly randomized horizontal offset so that the cannonballs sometimes slightly miss the player. The most difficult part, however, comes at the end. I mean, it's a rage game, but I don't want the player to rage quit out of frustration because of bad game design. So I created markers for the cannonball impact points that appear on the ground a few seconds before the actual impact. This gives the player a short time to dodge the cannonballs. But how the heck do you implement something like that? I found out that this process is called trajectory prediction and researched for a proper solution. It's really simple. We just need to perform some quick calculations with the weight of the cannonball, the vector 3 of our impulse, and the track collide by the gravity vector, sphere collider. I need to keep an eye on the performance, reset the velocity, the rigid body we need to find out the axis of the collision, the time of impact, deactivate the sphere what do collider, have to reset the collision, the time of impact, force divided by mass, multiplied by the gravity vector, render a line and visualize the trajectory. Trajectory prediction is a simple thing as you can see. At this point I'd like to thank you guys for the good feedback and the great ideas so far. Already in the first devlog I received this suggestion from Anikina. Different game modes would be fun, like a simple and a hard mode. 
<laughs> Rank Collins suggested the following. <laughs> How much should just be all the bugs left in the game? Imagine the platform you're about to jump on suddenly takes off into infinity and beyond. <laughs> I was thinking about different game modes. And as you already know, I was also thinking about implementing collectibles. I have now come to the decision that I want to offer two different game modes. For one, a normal mode with a simple task, reach the goal as quickly as possible. And the second mode, I call it hard mode, the gate at the end of the game is locked. And unlocking the gate is tied to a condition. Collect all coins during the run to unlock the gate and then reach the end. But uh, why do I call it hard mode? Is it really that hard? I'm not done yet, but I'm going to place a lot of coins in places that you can reach in a fair way. However, it might be a bit difficult. I have adapted the in-game UI for the hard mode to show the coins that have already been collected. Here's a short clip from the new game mode. The coins must be collected again in each run and are not saved. This allows speedrunners to use this mode as well. Let's move on to the next new feature. I've been working on the start menu for the game. It's not fully functional yet, but you can already select the game modes. When starting the game, there's also a loading indicator. If you've been paying attention, you have seen the character's menu item. There will be four different character skins in the game. You can unlock each of them in the game by completing certain tasks. We have two simple skins. I call them Cypher for the humanoid version and Rob for the robot one. By default, only Cypher is unlocked. Cypher and Rob also have elite skins that look a bit more epic and also have a different color palette and special effects. The Elite skins are the hardest to unlock. You will be able to see the exact conditions later in this menu. It should also be said that these are exclusively cosmetic changes. The hitboxes and mechanics remain unchanged. Want to see the new pirate area in action with an Elite skin? What do you guys think? Last but not least, I'd like to say a few words about small changes. I've added a simple anti-cheat protection. Whoever finds a way to climb over the cliffs, for whatever reason, will now be killed by a death trigger. I have improved performance by marking non-moving objects as static. This reduces draw calls and batches and increases the frame rate. I've already worked internally on a solution to adjust the graphics quality and the FPS limit. But I still have to include this in the settings menu and save it in the config file. I have prepared everything to be able to include sound effects and music everywhere. That means there are already scripts for mixing and separating different audio sources. I will possibly show the script in more detail in the next devlog. I've already thought about the end of the game and with a little luck I will be able to show the next devlog as well. Whew, that was a lot of content again. I hope you still want more. As you already know, countless games appear on Steam every day and the competition is getting bigger and bigger. To increase the visibility of Cloud Escape, I ask you to add my game to your Steam wishlist. It's just one click and it doesn't cost you anything. 
but it would be a huge help for me to have more visibility at launch. Thanks again for all the nice and helpful comments. If you like my videos, please consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye.